Welcome back to Watercolor Theory. This week, we're heading to Vietnam. So I've never actually been to Vietnam, but it is definitely a place I want to go and spend some time there. My wife and I lived in Mexico in 2019 and early 2020. And uh, for, so for six months, we did the slow travel thing. And I would love to be a slow travel painter. So, but for now, studio painting is where it's at for me and uh, no on location. But this is quite a departure from the animal paintings. I've realized as I spoke of last week that painting figures has been something I've avoided. So I'm taking on that challenge. And then um, cityscapes as well. So in this painting, uh, Vietnamese flower merchant, and also next week's painting, I will be painting just an individual person, but they are in a cityscape setting. So trying to uh, broaden my horizons by uh, broadening my subject matter and kind of just doing some armchair traveling for the moment because travel isn't an option with my life at the moment, but maybe soon it will be. So I'm doing five takeaways this week, but they are going to be a little bit different. Um, it isn't just a takeaway about the painting itself. It's also maybe a take takeaway about painting in general. So that brings me to the checklist that I've been talking about. Um, ultimately, there will be two checklists. One will be a checklist for design elements. And right now this one is worth about 25 points and or yeah, 25 points. It has about 20, 20 to 21 objects and some of them are weighted a little bit uh, as more important than others. So some are worth two, most of them are worth one, but when you use the list, there might be something in there you don't see as being necessary for your painting and not all of the elements are necessary. It's just if you have maybe half of them or you know, 12, 13 out of 20, uh, just might help your chances. Um, the other checklist that I'll start working on will include thumbnails and doing a thumbnail very small to help you eliminate some of those pesky details that get in the way of a good painting and then do a value study. Can you break it down into two or three tones? And later in the video, I will show you a picture that illustrates why I like to do a tritone versus a no tan, because sometimes you need a third one. And the checklist will also have value study, color study, thumbnail, and other steps along the way. But the painting I'll be showing next week, the photograph was basically already a value study. So I didn't do a value study. I did different color studies because the painting was almost in black and white as well. And I'll show you that as well. So moving along to this week's five takeaways in under 10 minutes. Uh, the first takeaway is... Well, I shouldn't have even had to look away for that one. Using a checklist. Um, using the checklist is about getting consistent. Um, it's not about limiting you. It's just about making sure you're hitting all those steps and making decisions for your painting rather than just kind of winging it and building good habits along the way. It's kind of like when you go to the gym First, you kind of have to look up, well, what do I need to do to work on my legs? What do I need to do to work on my arms? Because you might not know what a bicep is or what a bicep curl is. So in the case of this, using that checklist as a guide through the process or a guide for creating your design with the design elements checklist. And then your workflow checklist would include thumbnails, value studies, color studies, etc. That brings us to takeaway number two, plan your work and work your plan. So having done a value study, having done pencil sketches, or just cropping the photo 
to where you want it to be. In the case of the Vietnamese flower merchant, it was a landscape photo that I cropped down to portrait so that it would be in portrait format and have less buildings and more emphasis on the flower merchant. So planning your work, working your plan, and then where did you deviate is the post-op. Where did I deviate and did it help? Did it hurt? And what can I learn moving forward? So analyzing, just playing back the film, kind of like in a, say a football game, you know, the next week they watch the tape, they say, what were you thinking here? Um, so just in our case, it's not to beat ourselves up. It's what's working, what's not working, and what can I do moving forward? And sometimes that what can I do moving forward might become part of your checklist. Maybe you've noticed that you always kind of miss this detail, that detail. When I say detail, I mean step or process, not necessarily you forgot to put in a particular item. Um, but just keeping yourself on track as you're building those good habits. And then as you develop those habits, maybe you ease away and then you see what is truly a habit and what's not. Um, I'm guilty of this where I'll do things in order of operations and then I'll slowly over time let those go. And then, okay, I need to go back to the checklist. Um, or I need to reevaluate how I'm painting. Is this how I want to paint or am I doing this to impress someone else? So uh, plan your work, work your plan. That takes us to takeaway number three. Takeaway number three, transcending photography. Um, getting your photo reference, whether you went to Vietnam and took this picture yourself or you got it from Pexels, which is where I got it from. You maybe took it and you thought, okay, this is a great landscape. But then you look at it and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to paint all these details. And then you turn it and you turn it into a portrait. It's like, oh, this captures the scene better. Um, sometimes when you're on location and you are taking pictures or you're sketching, it can be very overwhelming, which is why we simplify in our paintings. So don't be a slave to your reference material. Be willing to move things around. Um, look at the design checklist. How does it fit in and how can you make it fit in? Maybe you took a picture and it's in portrait mode, but you're like, oh, this would really look good if I, you know, had something over here to kind of show the distance this person needs to travel. So, so you know, eventually moving beyond the photograph um, just depends on where you're at in your journey. And speaking of journeys, we're on to takeaway number four. Takeaway number four, emphasizing values. So values do all the heavy lifting, color gets all the credit. So getting the values right in certain areas, but then just having a touch of color. In the Vietnamese flower merchant, I wish I had utilized my value scale and said, okay, in these foreground shadow areas, while I don't want detail, I need a separation of value maybe moving from a three to a five or, or a five, you know, a three, a jump rather than it kind of blending, having some hard lines that still show up in that darkness of the shadows. Um, just to give the eye a place to stop and try to make sense of things. It doesn't necessarily have to be something. It just needs to be enough to get the eye to stop and your brain to think, oh, I think I see this. Um, kind of filling in the blanks on its own, using the viewer's imagination to become part of that process and bring them on the journey with us. And that takes us on the next phase of our journey. Takeaway number five. Takeaway number five does tie in to uh, takeaway number four. It's enhancing contrast. It's bumping up the contrast in those shadows, which sounds a little um, counterintuitive, I guess. I mean, just 
skip a step, go from black to dark gray or dark gray to black. Um, there comes a point in every painting where you have to say, okay, I'm, I'm kind of done. I've, I've, I've written, I've painted my message here and the painting I'm, I'm happy with, but the next time I do a painting similar to that, I know I want to maybe have just a lamp in the shadow, like, oh, I see this, or, you know, th those are just examples of things hidden in the shadows that are kind of like little Easter eggs for the, for the viewer. They see it, they capture it, and maybe having it clearly be, in this case, a street lamp or whatever, maybe that engages their imagination and they, they picture a doorway or they picture other things. So it's, it's more to engage the imagination than to fully tell that story. Um, so I hope that makes sense in that. So that brings us uh, to the closing. Um, whereas uh, next week, I wanna introduce the painting I'm working on next week. It is also in Vietnam. Um, I don't know if this taxi, this vehicle is actually a rickshaw because I know that there's a rickshaw, there's a tuk-tuk. I need to figure out what this one is. It's a bicycle in the front and then it has a little carriage in the, in the back. There's nobody in it, but then there's a guy standing next to it and it's in the rain. And right now I'm done with two paintings and one of them's with graphite pencil. Two of them are with water soluble colored pencil. And I'm going to do a fourth one, but the fourth one will be a departure from the photograph. The photograph looks like a value study, but it's actually a color photograph. I'm going to put in what colors I think should be where. So a slightly bluish sky. Oh, here's some trees. Here's a gray building, but try to take a almost monochromatic paint uh, photograph and turn it into a color painting. So, and I don't know yet if I'm going to use colored pencil, regular colored pencil, not watercolor colored pencil, or if I'm just going to do the outline in graphite and, and go from there. But I've really enjoyed the painting um, and the challenges it's giving me. And after doing four of them, what will I know? Who knows? That'll be next week, and it'll probably be the week after that. I'll probably do two of them one week and two of them the following week. But uh, that's my slow travel painter uh, introduction, I guess, uh, STP, uh, slow travel painter. And I uh, hope to uh, be able to continue with Vietnam for a little while. It's like a beautiful and fascinating place. And uh, thank you to the new uh, subscribers and the uh, subscribers I've had for a few months. Um, the painting processes, this is just an evolution. I, still, I will still be splattering and doing some of those signature things, but trying to get them into a more realistic type of approach. Whereas um, when I was painting the animals and just using these bright, vivid colors, as long as I had my values correct, it didn't matter what the colors are. Now I'm trying to move into using a semi-realistic color palette. I say semi-realistic. I mean, it's not full blown. I'm not trying to capture that as of yet. So that's kind of where I'm heading right now. Thank you again for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below, like it, share it. Um, and I'm at 73 subscribers right now, and let's move it on up to 74, I guess. So thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.